Salary compression is when someone who has a, a lesser amount of tenure with an organization or maybe lesser years of experience actually makes as much or more than someone uh, with equal or greater tenure. Any large organization is going to have compression. The market is constantly changing, skills are constantly changing, compression occurs. What is unique is that not many organizations actually address compression. So the Board of Supervisors and the School Board have taken the step to move forward to address compression, and that's a great thing for our employees. And everybody came together with the, with the thought of, okay, if we're going to do something like Henrico does, where we look at a problem and as opposed to kicking the can down the road, let's see what we can do to solve it. Human Resources had two staff who Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, every single week for six months, did nothing but work on this assignment looking at individuals, looking at employees' histories, how many years of experience they have, how many years have they been with Henrico, degrees, credentials, they looked at it all. It was a joint effort between schools and general government. The Board of Supervisors implemented a, a committee to look at uh, compression on both sides of the house. And so a similar um, study was done on the school side as well. And ultimately what these folks have come forward with is a solution that I think for many, many years uh, will be something that we can count on in Henrico County. So as we completed our study, we realized that yes, Henrico County does have some salary compression like any other organization. And of the almost 4,100 general government employees that were studied, only a little over 600 of them were found to be compressed. The resolution adopted by the Board of Supervisors made it clear that we were looking at compression for all school and county employees. And that is, in fact, what we did. We looked at over 6,700 school employees. And based on our analysis, around 1,900 or one out of every three and a half employees were compressed. Employees who were compressed were compressed by different levels. And so by doing a comprehensive study and looking at each individual, then we can look at each individual as we make recommendations for how to adjust their salaries to mitigate compression. There is a recommendation that will be coming forward in the manager's proposed budget that's coming uh, to the board in March. Within that proposed budget, there will be a dollar amount tied to compression and fixing the issues that were found by the committee itself. That amount is going to equate to about $5.8 million for both general government and schools. So on July 1, the recommendation is to fix 100% of the issues that were found. I think it is important to study positions fairly often, regularly, to look at uh, whether there is compression and how it could best be mitigated. I think one of the positives that came out for general government is the importance of having career development plans for as many positions as possible. Uh, we currently, on the general government side of the house, have 52 career development plans. And career development plans are a way for employees to increase their salaries uh, without having to have an actual position vacant. And so probably the most positive result of the study for our school system is that they are working now to develop a career development plan for teachers. One of the exciting things that's come of the compression study is this notion of career ladders. And so while um, that may alleviate some future compression issues, one of the biggest bonuses in taking that approach is that teachers will have the ability to grow professionally and make their own choices about how they might progress when it comes to their learning and potential salary increases rather than maintaining a traditional approach where teachers accrue salary bumps just by accruing time. One of the things that really stuck out to me through this process is we, we talked to staff to get input throughout the process. And one of the comments that we heard back was, wow, for the first time, teachers can really have a voice in their compensation. And the passion in which that comment was delivered, uh, the sincerity, really, I think, motivated staff to, to come up with a, a great plan for our teachers moving forward.
As a school division, our mission is to make sure that we're providing high quality instruction and experiences to our students every day in the classroom. And in order to accomplish that, we need to make sure that we're recruiting and retaining high quality staff. And so knowing that um, both the county government and school division are committed to working together to examine issues that affect teacher retention and recruitment, um, that's a big win for us. The reality is it's the same dollar, it's the same county, it's one county. I can't explain to my child, you know, the difference between general government and schools and why there should be a difference, so we just don't operate that way. And this is ongoing, this is forever. This is a board resolution and a school board resolution that says you will do this and we will do this and we owe it to our employees to do this as well. But also know every three years, not only are we going to be looking at compression on a day-to-day -day basis, but every three years we're going to truly go through an analysis, all employees. Right now, we're over 10,000 strong on the general government and school side. The goal is to look at every single employee every three years and determine whether or not we have compression. And if we do have compression, let's fix it.